Last Sunday after Kyle Busch got wrecked at Pocono, we were all kind of sitting there like, what, what, what? Who is this? Who is this guy? Kyle Busch got dumped by Corey LaJoy on a restart and as a result was spun into the field and a bunch of other cars crashed. Well, after that, he did his normal post-race media after you go to the infield care center and he declined to expand on it. He talked to the media, but when they asked him about it, he just said, nah, that's what he said at TV at least. Well, we're here about five days later and, um, well, Kyle Busch has some opinions that he has liked the world to know. NASCAR's at the Brickyard 400 this weekend, the return to the Oval in Indianapolis. Well, Pat McAfee, he works for ESPN, used to be a punter for the Colts. Punting is winning, by the way. Anyways, Kyle Busch went on to his show, did a fancy entrance with flashing lights and brought chicken tenders from Cheddar's, everyone's dream. And he decided to talk on the show. They talked about a number of talk topics. They talked about the fight with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. They talked about Kyle Busch's winning streak. They talked about racing etiquette. They talked about their favorite type of M&Ms. I mean, there was a lot of topics discussed, but Kyle Busch went back and he broke down the incident with Corey LaJoy. And then he, um, well, here, here's what he said. He just clips me. And like, that's like stupid. Like, what are, what are we doing? We're going 190 miles an hour into that corner and we're going to wreck each other? Yeah. No, I didn't even know. He, he texted me and then he called me. I didn't even reach back out because he changed his story four times. So I'm like, you're just a liar. Like, you wrecked me. Like, I get it. It's fine. Whatever. Payback's coming. But you so, yeah. Kyle Busch, obviously not happy with Corey LaJoy. I don't think any driver would be happy with Corey LaJoy after what happened. Obviously, Corey LaJoy has gotten a lot of... Um, I guess backlash would be the right term after the incident. Uh, initially, LaJoy said that he hooked himself. And then, you know, at one point he said he turned him. And then at another point he was saying that Kyle Busch hit the chip and he misjudged it. And, you know, there was nothing he could do. So, you know, in a sense, Kyle Busch is right. But this is like old Kyle Busch that we saw in this interview. Um, Kyle Busch over the years, I don't want to say has mellowed out because he still has flashes like this of the old Kyle Busch, the fiery kind of Kyle Busch, the one, the Kyle Busch that would bump the pace car after it started raining and he wrecked as a result. The Kyle Busch that after getting spun out on the last lap doesn't even say, hey, what's up to Joey Logano, just goes up and punches him. Kyle Busch that goes up to the crowd and does this, you know, where where's that Kyle Busch been in a sense? And as I said, we've seen flashes of it over the past few years, but as he has gotten older, as he has matured, it seems like once again, I don't want to use the term mellowed out, but there's been less and less of those moments. And with how bad this year has been for Kyle Busch, for RCR, especially the last few weeks, you know, Kyle Busch said in this interview, five out of the last seven weeks, they've wrecked. It's just like what I've been, everyone's been asking, when is he going to snap in a sense? When is he just going to lose it, go back to old Kyle Busch, ripping on people, you know, bumping people up the track, doing what he has to do to send a message and, um, well, he said payback's coming. So here's the thing. NASCAR's going to step in. NASCAR has acknowledged it, by the way. They made a whole full-blown graphic on social media, their social media pages. So NASCAR is fully aware of the comments, obviously. But now I feel like Kyle Busch can't do anything because he went out in public and he said payback's coming. So if he spins LaJoy out, if he pinches him into the wall, if he obliterates him, then obviously that would be. Like, if he does what Matt Kenseth did to Joey Logano, that would be suspension-worthy. But even if he just spins him out, even if it's not this week, if it's at Richmond next month, if it's at Michigan, or even if it's at Darlington in September, NASCAR would be like, oh, Kyle Busch wrecked Corey LaJoy. Hey, we got to study that. we got to look into that. You know, there's a history there, and Kyle Busch blatantly said, payback's coming. And th this is my problem. NASCAR is literally promoting it. It's the same problem I had with the Stenhouse fight. NASCAR posted it 10 times on their social media over the next 24 hours of that fight happening. But then they said, actually, Ricky, we're going to fine you for that. So my big problem with this, I think Kyle Busch should be allowed to speak his mind. I think he should be allowed to say, you know what? Corey LaJoy something, did something stupid to me. I'm going to get him back for it. Now, once again, he... I don't think he should be allowed to do what Matt Kenseth did to Joey Logano, but if he spins him out just a little bit, if he 
pinches him into the wall just a little bit. Once again, don't completely obliterate the guy, but if you just kind of spit him out just a little, maybe that's okay for payback. But the problem now is NASCAR's going to want to step in. NASCAR's going to want to get involved. They're going to want to penalize. They're going to want to do all this. Whereas they just, NASCAR needs to just let it go. As I said, there is a limit. There is a point that Kyle Busch would need to be penalized, but they're now promoting it. They're promoting the quote. They're promoting the clip that it was showed on. And with these sorts of situations, they get you ton of views, tons of clicks, tons of attention because it's exciting. It's thrilling. It's controversial. Kyle Busch is still kind of polarizing in NASCAR. You got a lot of people who hate him, a lot of people who like him. And frankly, Kyle Busch needs to be back in the headlines in a sense. Kyle Busch has always been in the headlines, whether he's winning, whether, as I said, he's getting in a fight with Joey Logano, whether he's saying something in the media center. I mean, Kyle Busch, when he's in the headlines, it feels like things are just whole in this world, whether people agree or disagree. Kyle Busch is that guy sometimes. And once again, I think he should be allowed to say what he wants. Now, if he's going to go out and say, Oh yeah, LaJoy, if we start next to each other, I'm junking you turn one. I'm obliterating your car. No, that's not going to happen. But he said payback's coming. So even if he doesn't any do anything, Corey LaJoy's got that on his mind. If he sees the eight car in his mirror, if he sees him next to his door, he's like, oh crap, is this it? Is he going to do it now? Um, so hopefully we don't see any extreme antics. And maybe Kyle Busch is just talking just to talk, just to scare Corey LaJoy in a sense. But NASCAR might get him on the phone or pull him aside this weekend and say, hey man, we know that you went on that show and you said payback's coming, but yeah, could you not do that? So in a sense, if you want my full opinion, once again, no, he shouldn't completely junk Corey LaJoy's car. He shouldn't intentionally wreck him, but if he spins him out, if he bumps him up the racetrack, just pinches him in the wall a bit, I say, hey, that's fair game. Kyle Busch got completely junked by LaJoy last week. He kind of owes him one. But uh, the, the thing is, is that NASCAR has been extremely inconsistent with their penalties lately, it seems like, when it comes to fining people, when it comes to suspension sometimes. The one consistency is that they'll suspend you if you right rear hook someone into the wall. That's one race suspension. Other than that, it's been kind of inconsistent, kind of unpredictable, so you never know what NASCAR is going to do. But once again, my opinion is I think Kyle Busch should be allowed to get back at him. He shouldn't do he shouldn't do it. Kurt Busch and Jimmy Spencer did at Indianapolis all those years ago because we had practice at Indy today and we were hitting 200 miles an hour at the end of the speedway or at the end of the straight. So that's a no-no. But, you know, once again, I mean, if Kyle Busch does something light, he knows what he's doing. He'll know how to spin someone out. Uh, I personally would not be opposed to that. But if he's junking cars, if he's intentionally wrecking, anything like that, that's too far. But I just hope that if Kyle Busch does anything, NASCAR doesn't penalize him because it takes some of the spice away from the sport. Um, I get we all want to see great racing. We want to see a great race finish. We want to see the best car win. We want to see a fun winner if we can't get the best winner. Um, so some people don't like when drivers are going out self-policing and just wrecking each other or putting each other in the wall but I think it adds some excitement I think it adds some spice as I said so hopefully Kyle Busch does something but not too extreme now as for Kyle Busch in his 2024 season we will see what that holds practice at Indianapolis is complete Kyle Busch was 16th fastest Corey LaJoy was 32nd fastest Tyler Reddick the fastest overall we had a 50 minute session due to it being a new track with this car as for the rest of the weekend, we got qualifying tomorrow. We got the Xfinity Series. I'm looking forward to it. We'll make a video on that. Cole Custer has an announcement for his 2025 plans. Anticipated to be the Cup Series ride with Haas. So, uh, yeah, we'll talk about that in the morning. Then we got the Xfinity race in the afternoon to talk about. So, thank you for watching this video. Let me know what you think. If Kyle Busch will do anything. If so, should NASCAR penalize him depending on what he does? Um, but yeah, that's all I got for today. So I'll see you guys in the next one.